Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Rivals. We have a topic we want to talk to you about today because of a video we did earlier in the year where I said I needed to play more retro games. And it made me question, is it worth it to get started in retro gaming in 2021? We know this topic's been done a hundred different ways before about retro gaming to some degree. The reason yeah. I wanted to touch on it a bit more is because retro gaming to me and gaming in general is really yeah. new. <clears throat> to you, yeah. When I started playing more retro games this year, I didn't realize really what I was getting into, what I was signing up for. <laughs> uh-huh. And you decide to go with what game was the first game you decided to take? Well, if you guys have been watching this channel, I have been trying to beat Adventure Island. On I've the been NES. On the NES. I've been getting close. And I think that's something we need to talk about because when we say retro, you and I think yes. NES, so, SNES, Sega. So we we come up with five questions here that we're going to present to you guys. Yeah. And we we'll want you to add in the comments what you think the answers or what your opinions are on or, everything. And we're going to talk and we're going to discuss between ourselves what we think. Yeah. Are. And if you guys feel inspired by this topic or any of the questions, oh, we invite. feel free to make a video about like it. Open tag. Is that what yeah, you're Yeah, an open it? tag. Yeah. You know, give your feedback too. Your experience might not be the same as my experience. I assume yeah. it's probably not because I'm coming at this from kind of a new gamer perspective. I would say. And a female perspective. Yes. So, you know what? Join in on the conversation. So the first question that we wrote down was, what do you consider to be a retro game? What generation, basically? Yeah. When I think of retro gaming, I automatically think of my childhood, which was the NES. Yeah. And then the Sega Genesis after that. Exactly. And we so. could pile in with the SNES, because yeah. that's from the same... Well, yeah, I just was... From my your, own experience, that's what I think. A, so you would be Super Nintendo, right? Exactly. My parents, if you ask them about retro gaming, they would say Atari. I know they would because yeah. my mom talks when we get into talking about gaming, which is awesome that I have parents that are super supportive do you about wanna, my gaming. Do you want to see Jen's mom on the show again? And maybe she can school Jen in some Atari? She probably could. I think so. They used to play games till the wee hours of the morning, but... They're, they were Atari generation. Yeah. Alex would think an Xbox 360 ancient, you ancient, know? Yes, because it when depends we start, on what do you are. consider retro? I We talked about this just this week. Yeah. And there are a lot of those consoles that are after your NES, your Super NES. And Gen there are a lot of consoles now. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll say, I think the PlayStation is approaching... It's not 30 years yet, is it? Uh, 20 it's gotta... something. Because uh, because yeah, I think PS2 I think is 21 first... years, and Xbox original Xbox is 20 years. Is 20 along years along with the GameCube, GameCube is 20 years. Yeah, so, and I think anything over 20 years, 20 years and over, is, absolutely is yep. your stereotypical definition of retro. Yeah. So those would be retro, but immediately when we think retro games. We look past those right, and we go to even further beginning. back. To we, the beginning. To the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that depends on your definition of retro. Yeah. Should I be playing more Xbox games, too? Probably. Should I play Absolutely. more PlayStation games, GameCube games? Yeah. Like, all these consoles that I keep thinking, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, I gotta, I gotta think outside that box. So, my retro gaming experience has to be... A bit of everything. So when you're going to consider, because you are playing Tomb Raider on your PS4 right now, and you say, well, the next game i got to play is, a it's got to be game. a retro game. And you know, what should I play? I'm like, why don't you play an original Xbox game? That's yeah. 20 years old now. Yeah, because like, the retro games I have been playing, that I have beat this year, have almost exclusively ADS. been Nintendo games. Yeah. Yeah, so I... You put yourself in a box of thinking what a retro game is, and depending on your generation, that's exactly where you go. Mm -hmm. More often than not. So, that leads us into our next question, which is... 
value of an old game versus the value of a modern game. And when I mean value, like... We mean financial it, value. Financial value, because we, we had talked about this sitting, having a drink here, and um, people don't want to spend, for us in Canada, to buy a brand new game is 89.99 yeah it's like it's 90 dollars for a mainstream yeah. title we're not talking indie titles because yep. you can get those for like 39 49 dollars a physical copy of demon's souls for ps5 is going to run you 90 dollars plus tax yep. and the tax in new brunswick is 15 percent yep. so you're spending over 100 dollars on a brand new game and everybody will do it all day long to be the first person to play that game yeah amongst and, their friends but they, when you tell them that you paid a hundred dollars for a retro game, you will get some looks. Yeah. yeah. Nobody you bats that? an eyelash yeah. about yeah. spending a hundred dollars yeah. on a new title. We spent a hundred and fifty on Castlevania Symphony of the Night last year. Yeah. Yeah. I don't regret that one bit. I don't. That'll either. be a game I continue to play every year. I think. Yeah. I yeah. I agree. If you can find a game that usually costs you hundred and fifty dollars for hundred dollars. You just made it a, like a bandit. But yeah. anybody else that doesn't know the value of a game, you spent how much on an old game that's 20 uh, yeah. years old? Yeah. They don't if understand. you're not in the, I guess, the hobby of collecting and you're not up on what everything goes for now. And that's true of any hobby. Yeah, like comic books. I, I collect comic books. I collect old toys. And people have asked me, what's your most expensive comic book worth? And I'm like, oh, about $800. What? Yeah, <laughs> like, the people are shocked that paper can be worth eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and that's not even an expensive comic book for something that's old. And, yeah, you know. But some people collect sneakers. Some people collect whatever cars. Like, holy fuck! Thank God we don't collect cars, because yep. that's a much more expensive hobby. <laughs> some people collect cars. I guess I find for myself there's more value in spending a hundred dollars into a retro game than there is to spend a hundred dollars on a brand new game and the main reason why i think that way is how many games especially recently have yeah. come out brand new and are basically unplayable yeah. straight out of the box because they need all these updates to work they need these patches you know I cyberpunk was one oh that came to God. mind there Fallout 76. Uh, days gone. Days gone. Like it's happening more and more, and I have a hard time gambling a hundred bucks away on a game which I may I may be completely pissed off and disappointed and will ruin, ruin the experience. And I may not go back to that game ever again. Or you wait six months, you get it for half the price yes. when the game has been fixed. But older games were me meant to be played from the time you put it in your machine. There was no updates. There was no patches. Yeah, you're getting the same game. You're getting the same release. game yeah. that the person beside you is getting, whether their Wi-Fi connection is strong or not. A uh, guy we watch on YouTube, Easygoing Gaming, he has problems because he doesn't have a fast internet connection. So he's Just bought like some you. of these games <clears throat> and he's like, I can't even play it. Oh, because they're completely broken when you first buy them. Exactly. You need a patch. So that, I mean... Retro gaming makes, like, the luster for that is a little bit more when you consider for you can myself, play it right, you know, yeah. right away. Being a gamer, there's not many games I buy day of release. There's not many. No. And because of that, because I don't want to get burnt, I don't want to have to play a subpar game waiting for a patch. You know, no. like, if, if we had to play Days Gone day of release... We never would have. We would have had a much different it would have been experience. Yeah. We wouldn't have enjoyed it. Yeah. Because we, so many people hated yep. it, and we were like, "Oh, we actually really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun yep. sitting down together." It was like six months after release or something yeah. like that, and they had most of the bugs ironed out at that point. But yeah. we still found one we pretty bad one. Yeah, but. we did. And you know what? We pretty much stopped playing it at that point. We did. Yeah. Shortly after that, it was such a put a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it really can. Now, we're talking about value of games, but about, okay, let's say Last of Us 2. That came out not even a year ago. Yeah. It was a $90 game at the yes. time. Yeah. And you can get a copy of that right now for how much? 40 bucks. It's... Just wait, just wait on it. Yeah. yeah wait. Moving on to the next <laughs> topic. <clears throat> Is it cheating? 
eat one of those NES games through emulation yeah. where you have save states. And I know this has been asked a lot before too, and we really haven't weighed in. And we have, uh, Scott has a stronger viewpoint on it. I do. I'm a little bit mixed and maybe that's because I'm coming in it, to it so late in the game. I'm um, also, let me. You do yours first, yeah. I'll, I'll do me. Right, <laughs> you do you. All right. My opinion on it is people that beat NES games through emulation and save states is you finished the game. You didn't beat the game. Yes. Uh, I don't care if you play it through emulation as long as you play it from start to finish without doing save states. Yeah, I think it's there are that's NES, what it is for you. There is. are NES and Super NES and stuff like that that you can do saves. If you do it like that, then that's fine. But Because it's original but, hardware. Yeah. Correct? Okay. But... But if you do, like I was telling you before, like I have uh, Thunder Force 3 on my Sega Genesis Mini. Now, I can go play that one world over and over and over until I get it and beat it, and then, all right, save it right there, then start playing the next world over and over and over and over and over. And oh, okay, I finally beat it, now I do another save state, and you'll get through the game eventually. Yeah. But for me to sit down and actually go through the entire game, one shot, that's so, beating it. No, so there's a line in the sand between finishing yes. a game yes. and beating a game. Yeah. And I agree with that. I think you can say you beat a game if you disclose how you beat it. No, no. No, so you finish. You finish. Yeah, yeah, You don't yeah, beat. Yeah. I got to see the ending of the game. Could you finish a game on emulation and then go beat the game on original hardware? Well, you should. Yeah. You can I finish so. it, yeah. If I... If you're going to use emulation, which I think is probably one of the best ways to go play your retro gaming. To perfect gaming, a game. Is to get practice in yeah. on all these hard parts, whatever. And if you have, if you love that game and you want to be able to be able to actually beat the game, then you're going to need to practice. And, and if there's a hard part somewhere that you need to practice over and over and over again, that's the way you got to do it. Now, even um, the price of the games and the hardware and all that stuff, they even have retro game itself. Mm -hmm. That collection is is it's expensive so it is expensive. go emulation and if you have a bunch of games that you really like that you've played through emulation and you're like now I want now to, you have to have them now I want then you source them out after that yeah okay well since we're talking about how hard those old games can be is it worth your time to try and beat a retro game some of them weren't difficult some of them were downright easy oh, then yeah. little mermaid you can beat them like yeah. 20 minutes. You know, it doesn't take that long. But we're talking about the Mike Tyson's, Battletoads, Contra, uh, Contra Adventure Contra. Island, mm -hmm. of course. That's been my arch nemesis this <clears> year. <throat> uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts, yeah. Oh my shit. Tried to play that once. <laughs> I got a lot drunk. He got a lot more drunk. It was a challenge. Yeah, it was, it was my drinking. I it know, but funny. I had to drink to ease the pain. But if we're talking about those older games being super hard, some of the really hard ones, are modern games too easy? Are they too easy? Because we always say, I, I will ask Scott, do you think I can beat this game? Or I'll ask a friend that recommends a game, a newer game, do you think I can beat this game? And they always say yes, because modern games are meant to be beat. Yeah. There's not... I a, think... Um... There's a few... Well, there are your your demon souls and dark souls and stuff like that are going to be difficult. There's going to be, yeah, yeah harder games. Yeah, they're going to be hard games. But if, as long as you are willing to put the time in, you're going to beat them. They're meant to be beat. Yes. These games, like the the newer the generation, the easier the games are. You're, you're not playing it for a challenge most of the time. You're playing it for the experience of a story. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see many people 30 years from now and say, Oh, yeah, I finally beat Dark Souls. <laughs> well, and we're going to be like, maybe. what the f why didn't you beat yeah. that 30 years ago? Yeah. We're all playing VR now. 30 years from now, I'll be in an old age home playing with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but if you tell somebody, you know, I beat Mike Tyson, they'll be like, oh yeah, you finally beat Tyson. Nobody's going yeah. to question why you didn't do it 30 years ago. Okay. Well, since we're talking about Tyson. Yeah. I opened my big mouth. A few months ago, yeah. and said I was going to beat Tyson this year, 2021. 20, so I had to, and I actually did. I, in, it was yep. January 27th. 
Yeah, it was 11 a.m. I finally beat Tyson for the first yeah. time. Yeah. So, but doing that, I mean, I could you... tell my friend, you know, told Dennis, and he's like, what? Yeah. So we get excited, you know? Like, oh, I mean, if I went and told him, yeah, I beat Resident Evil 6. Ah, good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? it. Like, there's, yeah. there's no, there, it's not iconic. It's not the same kind of feeling. Challenge. It's not the challenge. And then I told you, because you were playing your Adventure Island, I told you there's no more satisfying feeling of beating a game than when you beat an NES game. There, and there really yeah. isn't. I've yet to feel that satisfaction with a hard NES game. I will get there. I'm tempted to say I want to beat Tyson this year too, but I just don't know. I don't know what kind of time I can put in because the time you spend on a modern game, and I don't care if it's a 30, 60 hour game, you know there's an end to that game eventually. I don't know when I beat Tyson. Tyson I don't know if it takes 30 so hours many, or 1200 hours. There's so many know. like different videos now to help you with strategy to figure out. That's true. So it didn't really take me that long. Yeah. Because I literally started January 1st or 2nd and then by the 27th and I wasn't playing every day. No, no. By the 27th of January, that's the first day I beat him. But so, that time... There was some times when you were oh downright ugly. Yeah. And you can't really get ugly at a newer game because you're like, well, ugly. I'm done. I'm angry. Yeah, I'm done. I'll <laughs> save ugly. it. Ugly. Damn you, ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save it for now. And I'll come back to it tomorrow with Tyson. You're like, well, I guess I'll start that all over fucking again tomorrow. <laughs> we can put in the code, sure, but that's yeah. not beating the game. No. You just beat uh, Tyson. No. You didn't beat Mike Tyson's punch out. So I feel like we've given you guys a lot to think about asked a lot of different questions. Our answers to those questions may not be the same as your answers to those questions. Have an open discussion in the comments. Yeah, have an open discussion. Yep. Doesn't mean we're right. No, <laughs> probably <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Just means that's how we it's feel. It's my opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Yeah. Just so. like buttholes. Most of them stink. Most of them stink. <laughs> I am still going to try to put effort into retro gaming to answer the very title question, is it worth it to play retro games in 2021? In 2021, yes, I really think it is because I think they are worth it. And we're not just talking financial worth, we're talking is it worth your time? I, I think effort. it's it, effort. <laughs> I think it is worth it. Yeah. I think there's value there. I want one last question here. I'm going to ask mm. you and everybody out there. Okay. This was not on our sheet, so this is very ad-libbed and improvised in, and it's probably going to be stupid. I will ask you at the end of the year, because you don't have enough experience, what is your favorite retro video game console? Until next time, everybody, keep retro. Keep retro. And game on. Game on. Because I knew you want to say that. You have to. That's what we say at the end of every video. Leave it hanging. Oh, you want to kiss? I thought you were making duck face. Duck face? I think I got some of your face on me. <laughs> Ow! My eye! <laughs> I didn't really hit your eye, did I? You didn't hit my eye! <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs>